Hello, it's Jimmy here at Over Elite, and I have here a Ford Transit Tipper, uh, so it's a rear wheel drive and it's got engine management light on with some DPF issues, so we'll get inside and have a look. Okay, so here we have engine management light on, engine service now, let's see if we press OK on here, if that, anything else, no, that's the only message. Okay, I'm going to use the Launch UK Euro Tab 3, and uh, we'll set up Intelligent Diagnostic. Press that. Now we'll run a high speed scan. And let's see what we're looking at. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm going to try and ignore that one for now. For the ABS. Uh, exhaust, gas, temperature, sensor, circuit high. Bank one sensor number three, um, particle filter restriction, soot accumulation. Bank one. All right, so we'll uh, go in and look at live data or data stream, as it's called on here. Just wipe up the screen of the camera there, and um, we'll uh, look for exhaust gas temperature. So 13 would be bank one number three there. We don't even have the other ones on here listed, so look at the pressure of the DPF as well. And we press OK. Okay, so we have got a block DPF at close to 30 millibars there. Temperature of the exhaust, 100 degrees. Mm, it's literally just pulled up, so I was expecting it to be higher than that. Let's give it a rev. Oh wow, that's a bit erratic there, isn't it? Hmm, let's give it a rev again. Now what I can notice here is this vehicle is extremely restricted on power. Look at the revs, how slow they are. That's a full rev. So, not only have we got a block DPF now, uh, this is going to be the cause for the DPF blocking because obviously this sensor looks like it's acting a bit erratic. Um, so, we'll look at testing the plug and changing the sensor if need be. So I think it's going to be very likely that we're going to do that. Okay, so I'm looking under here and from what the customer said, someone's changed this sensor before. Not this one, uh, so it looks like the wrong sensor has been changed. Um, it's been messed around a bit, so I think Toddy come over and see me. We're gonna maybe put these cables up a little bit better as well. And uh, we're gonna unplug this sensor up here, uh, the black plug right here, to get that disconnected. Now I just get my multimeter, put the pins up there, check that we're getting voltage here. And we are. Okay, so I've got a replacement sensor here. We're going to get this plugged in and confirm that the readings are now looking okay once we've got it fitted. Um, part number four of this is there. Obviously, just check your own vehicle. Okay, now here is where the sensor comes off. So you've got number one, two, and then three. Now you can see there, it's already started to to slip a bit so it's a bit seized on we're gonna try and get some heat on it and then we'll try try again okay so this is where we are this is what's happened now we've put the spanner on and it's just sheared off so we're left with the other piece of that in here and the sensor is stuck so we're going to have to now try and get this out. Okay, so that's the old one drilled out and the new one put in. Okay, back in the van. Start it up. Okay, now we just wake this back up. Let's have a 
a look at this sensor now. Keep a good eye on that, make sure it's not acting erratic again. So now we've got the vehicle idling, we've managed to get it up to 125 degrees there for about a minute of holding the revs. It hasn't fluctuated at all, so it all looks okay to me. Now a little bit of chat about some of the symptoms he's been having here. Um, what the customer came to me and said was, every time he gets in the vehicle, um, if he drives it for more than say 5 or 10 minutes, it would cut out, lose power, die, and it wouldn't restart. If he leaves the van for more than an hour, then come back, it would restart drive it for maybe four or five miles again and the same thing would happen. Uh, it, it had been to a couple of mechanics and they replaced one of those exhaust gas temperature sensors and I think apparently they said one of them done a DPF clean which obviously didn't work well even if it did without fixing the issue the DPF would quickly block again. Um, so obviously the other guys have now gave up and said they don't know so he's, he's called me and come out um, so I can have a look over the vehicle. When he said it was cutting out after a short time, to be honest, I was thinking it was fuel related, but I, I, I did have in the back of my head, it could be the uh, thermal cutout, or I say thermal cutout, but for English, thermal cutout uh, is what they call it. Um, so if the temp temperature sensor reads that it goes above a thousand degrees, it will automatically just cut the engine slowly. It wouldn't do it so abruptly, but you'd lose power and then you'd s suddenly come to a stop. Um, and that's just to save the van from catching fire basically because it thinks it's it's getting too hot and i think that's what the issue was with this sensor it was just something something wrong inside it where it was shooting up to a thousand degrees and cutting off there was a code there he told me before for exhaust and temp temperature too high um but that was cleared by the other garage um so i'll put that code in the description as well so people know what they're looking for and it also had a code for circuit issues with the sensor as well Okay, so now that we're here, so what we need to do now is, if we just reset everything, he's going to make it half a mile up the road, and it will, it will, go back into limp mode because this DPF needs to be, either forced regen, or cleaned, flush out the DPF. Now you know I don't like to do forced regens. There's a lot of risk involved and a lot of unnecessary wear on your engine, and then you'll also have to change your engine oil. So you're not saving any money by doing it. So we'll just do a flush on it, and uh, we'll hopefully get the pressure down where it needs to be. I don't know if the DPF is okay at the moment because we need to clean it and then see the results afterwards. Okay so now I've injected the cleaning fluid in here. What I've done is just remove the holes here from the DPF now that that's in we can reconnect it. So this is the kit here we use Launch UK DPF gun. It's connected up to a compressor and this here is the actual fluid. So now we'll start back up the engine. I'm going to hold the revs up at 3000 RPM, or close to it. We'll hold that there for a couple of minutes. Now we'll get this up on a chart, if it'll press. get that pressure down as much as we can. So for these particular vehicles anything below sort of 80 is a, is a good reading. Below 100 you could say is acceptable but ideally you want it somewhere between sort of 40 to 80 millibars. slightly slipped up a bit there. It's hard to keep track of these. Sometimes they do just wander off. Here we are now just reaching about 80. So we're going to 
going to let it idle now and we'll see where it's sitting at idle so the max you want to see these sitting at is about 10 millibars which is where we are now but we'll hold the revs for another couple of minutes so while this is happening you're going to see some white vapor coming from the exhaust there okay now to reset uh, a lot of stuff let's go back here first and i'll show you something as well so now we've reset the pressure we've also got soot calculations in the ecu which do get locked in once the car goes above a certain amount so you can see there we're at 150 um let's start it back up you can see there this one's at 151 and that one's at 150. Okay, so with the engine off, I'm going to come back from there, go to special functions, powertrain control module, reset the diesel particle filter values. So that's going to reset those numbers, which will allow us to clear the fault. Now that we've done that, we'll go in and read the codes and we'll get these cleared. These are the two codes that we have currently. Okay, now we can see that we, once we've done those resets, these are back to zero. And the pressure of the DPF has come down now to seven. Of course, we've only been holding the revs for a minute or two max. And once we've taken it on our test drive, that will come down further. But I'm happy to now let the customer go um, we're below 10 millibars at idle and we're sort of around 70 at 3000 rpm so very happy with that result what i need to do in the future sometimes is talk about these pressures and what are good readings and what are not generally i would always say that these sort of readings here are accurate for for all cars but i'm seeing some newer euro 6 vehicles that are a lot more sensitive to these numbers now if we look at the speedometer we're going to have no lights on and i'm happy to uh, definitely say that this guy can now use the vehicle and the faults are not going to return anytime soon so it has now stopped raining so sorry about the messy hair but that's what happens uh, i think we're all just about finished on this so hopefully i sp spoke through the numbers and everything else um just about right the way you can understand what i'm talking about um we don't see this sort of fault too often often with the temperature sensors failing like that but it has done on this one and I'm sure it'll help someone out. So that's what's left of the old one. What we've had to do is cut it off and then drill the last bit out. The other little bit is around here somewhere. I can't seem to find it at the minute, but it's there somewhere. Anyway, that's this uh, Ford Transit all finished. And I'll see you on our next video.